And a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a journalist and best-selling author, a TV personality and a TV presenter who currently has a new book out on her favourite theme in recent years. And it's this, how to liberate German women from what she calls the diet cycle or nutrition hysteria or even the dictatorship of skinniness. I think you are beginning to get the picture. Now, the woman behind this campaign, here she is, live and in person, Susanna <laughs> <laughs> yes, hello. Yes, welcome to Talking Germany. <laughs> Susanna Fröhlich, first question that I would like to ask you, wait for this. What is a mopple? A mopple? Um, <laughs> a mopple is like a nice expression for a person who is not a fat, fat person, but in between, a little overweight, but, you know, to be to be told overweight sounds very medical and very ooh. Mm. Mopple is a little more friendly. And this is a word you use to describe yourself in your books. True. Yeah. Because I have a mirror, I know what <laughs> you know. Yeah, I see what I see. When we talk about these things, it's sometimes what one thing that you've succeeded in doing is actually talking about the whole issue of size. And in the in the English speaking world, when we talk about these things, very often the first two words you hear are political correctness. Yeah. Political correctness is very important nowadays. Mm. But there is no political correctness for fat people. Everybody since the, he can well, talk sorry, about fat people. No, the, the, the political correctness about fat people is you don't talk about it. They talk about them. They mm. say, look at this. I hope he's not sitting beside me in the, Good point. In the plane. Good point. Yeah. yeah, and everybody feels like he's above because he's not fat. Yeah. At least I'm not fat. Yeah. You know, you can be everything in this society. You can be like uh, silly like a toast bread. Mm -hmm. You can be... You can uh, cheat with your tax. You can do everything. They will forgive you. But being fat seems like you're not disciplinated. Yeah. You don't have yourself, uh, you, you overeat, you're like, you're a lazy person, you look awful, all these things. If you're fat, you're like, oh, no, you're out of society. <laughs> The open, funny and very honest Susanna Frölich. When we talk about issues of size, we've already talked about size a little bit, why are we so often talking about women and not about men? Or am I missing the point? I think the pressure on men is increasing. Mm. But, yeah, I think for women it's really important to fit in a certain size because if you open every journal or every if you see a film, you have the impression that everybody except you is wearing size zero or at least okay sometimes a two but this is okay top mm -hmm. of the pop but most women in germany wear like a size 14 or 16 this is like yeah this is a normal size but if you go to a normal shop you don't get a 16. if i enter some shops in germany most of them like like Topshop or Hennes or whatever the, the names chain are. Stores. Yeah. yeah, I can't buy anything. I can buy like a scarf or maybe some shoes because feet don't get very fat. So that's all I can buy. The other things are look like for for but listen, babies. You, you, you're, you're suggesting, and in your book you say that there's something like a bit of a conspiracy behind all this, a bit of a Verschwörung, a diet Verschwörung, and, and, and the, the image that's put on women. There, in Germany there are lots of very intelligent, very wonderful, very strong women like yourself. Why have women so far put up with this conspiracy? Because it doesn't count what you reach as a woman. You can, have, you can make your doctor in physics, you can whatever, you get a Nobel Prize, you, you win a race, but somebody is saying, look, look how fat she is. Mm. This disturbs everything. Even but, women who are really self-confident yeah. get a crisis. So women can't make up their own rules about how they want to live. Tell me, you've got an 18-year-old daughter. Are yeah. things changing? Can she make up her own rules or is she... I hope she can, mm. but she has a mother like me. Mm. And I always, 
she's good looking, I tell her, and she's not going to be a model. So I say, who cares? Yeah. Sometimes, of course, everybody worries with herself. Oh, my legs are too big or whatever. I tell people, if you, you worry your whole life, women do this. You start with maybe 15, oh, my legs are too fat. And then you see 10 years later, you see the photos of yourself with 15 and you say, well, I would murder for these legs. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I still would have these legs, how wonderful. So you're never confident. Try to get a friend of yourself. It makes life really easier. And try not to compare with these uh, standards, ide ideal standards like Heidi Klum or, uh, or top models in the world. You don't compare yourself um, intellectual with Einstein. Mm. You do it with persons like around yourself. Mm -hmm. So I suggest women just go to the next supermarket mm -hmm. and look around. So these are normal women. Let's, let's talk about just one word. I asked you to translate the word into English, uh, the, the mopple word, yeah? yeah? Another word I'd like to ask you about is uh, the word vollweib. We're beginning to hear this in the, in, in the discourse about women an awful lot here in Germany. It's, it's used Fall an awful lot. Vollweib. What does that mean Which in means English? Yeah? A vollweib means full women. <laughs> Full Something women, yeah. for women. It has it's everything a woman should like in cliches have. Yeah. Full wife means she has so, a. She's big. She's, she's not boxing. really big, but she's she doesn't look like. It's you know, if you see her, you see she's a woman. Mm -hmm. If you see some models and they yeah. undress, you wouldn't know really if they are a boy or a girl. But is this another way all... forward? The, these, the, these, the, the, this new style women moving away from the mini women, is, it, is, that a, is that a way forward for women? Is that a new definition? of? Is that a useful definition or is that a cliché that's also harmful? I think this is a cliché too. Uh. Because um, I don't think you have to decide between being skinny there's mm -hmm. not only being skinny or being fat. I think there's a big variety. And not everybody is made to be an asparagus. There are potatoes around us. So like in plants or vegetables, it's a variety. So as long as you're healthy, mm -hmm. just stay calm. Okay. It's not the most important thing. I, I really hear women saying, the worst thing could happen to me would if I gain 10 pounds. And I say a worst thing that could happen is if you have cancer or your mom dies. Don't How right be silly. You are. How right yeah. you are. Yeah. OK, we're talking <laughs> about the pressure applied to men and women by the fashion industry, by magazines or whatever. And just a couple of months ago, one of Germany's leading magazines for women, it's called Brigitte. It has a circulation of somewhere upward of 700,000. It decided to oust those ultra skinny models we've been talking about and replace them with women of more normal proportions. Now, many people asked, was it a canny publicity campaign or an innovative new departure? Well, we heard it in that report, Susanna, a great marketing idea. idea. Is, it, is, is that all it is? No, it's, it's a little more. Of course, it's marketing, but it's more. It, it, it shows that even people working with models are fed up of these hysterical stuff. And they say, well, let's see, um, we show you that normal women can look good as well. It, it's nicer if I see a, a Brigitte now. I see normal women and they look good. So I know, oh, okay. And they have like a profession, they have a name, they have a story. This is quite nice. So I a step like in the right direction. I think so. Okay. Um, am, am I right in understanding that you are buddies with Alice Schwarzer? <laughs> <laughs> That's got you laughing already. I think, I think um, every woman should uh, appreciate what she has done. Ah. I'm not a buddy. We don't phone each other or, or meet each other. We know each other. OK, you're buddies. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you've almost answered my next question, because I was going to ask you, Alice Schwarzer, we should, for people outside Germany, explain that she's, she's probably the best-known feminist in yeah, Germany. I think that's fair to say. Um, I want to ask you, because we're talking very much about women's issues here, we're talking about men as well, of course, but are you a feminist? Yes. I think every woman should say yes, because... That's very unfashionable these days. Yeah, I know, it's most unfashionable. Women, most women like you these days, if I ask them, they say... Well, no, 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 better not, because it sounds unsexy. It sounds unsexy. It sounds unsexy, it sounds like you look horrible and that's the, your only chance to survive to be a feminist, which is... But it's not unsexy think... to want the same wages as men. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, in Germany, women get... 23% less for the same yeah. work, paid. So, 
of course I'm a feminist. Yeah. Um, Angela Merkel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know her too, don't you? Oh, that sounds brilliant, I think. Yeah, I know her. Yeah. Um, I had dinner with her. Mm -hmm. I was really proud. I got a card at home and I opened the envelope and there was Bundeskanzleramt. Mm -hmm. The Chancellor invites the you for dinner. The Chancellor's office yes. invites you. Really? And to I just opened it like this, like I always yeah. do. My son said, What have you done? <laughs> this envelope. So I met her. It was not a dinner by just we two. Okay. It was like 15 women mm -hmm. talking to her about film and media and books and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. and, but I was really curious and I was kind of proud. Mm -hmm. I can always say, Oh, Angela Merkel, yes, I know her. That's okay, nice. we're going to talk in just a like we'll this. talk in just a second a little bit more about what Angela Merkel is perhaps doing or not doing for German women mm -hmm. in their lives, in their careers. <laughs> one thing that's it, we should clarify one thing for the mm -hmm. viewers out there in the big wide world outside Germany. Uh, the first woman in that report lives in what used to be West Germany. The other one lives in what used to be East Germany. There's an important difference between those yeah. two backgrounds, isn't there? Can you maybe you can explain? West German women, lots of them live very traditional. Husband was working, they stayed at home with the kids. In East Germany, most women always worked. So they have, a, they have lots of kindergarten and uh, places where you, you, get, you put your ch kids. Yeah. So normal. Sort of daycare it's, centers. Yeah, daycare yeah. centers. It's normal in East Germany to work. It wasn't normal in West Germany for women to work. Mm. So it's a total different situation. And it's only changing very slowly, isn't it, really, in Western parts of Germany? Yeah. yeah, which is a pity because nowadays women are the ones who make um, better IBs. They, they're better in school. They're better at universities. So we need them to work. One second, I'm catching up. The IBs was the International Baccalaureate. Yeah, things okay, like so this. They, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. They, they finish school better yeah. than boys do. Yeah. So we need them to work, but to combine family and work, we need more daycare or mm. whatever. It's only happening very slowly. There's it a real, is Here very in Germany, slowly. again, coming back, all these, all these strong, very uh, German women like yourself, yeah, uh, they're very well represented in German society in general, but when you get into the top section of German society, well, you're shaking your head, yeah? yeah, no. yeah. There's a glass ceiling, yeah? It's, it's strange, I can't that? understand How do you explain it. it? Yeah? I, I very often talk to women, I say, if we all would say, if you don't put up daycare, we are more than half of the, the population in Germany, women. Yeah. Yeah. So we would say, we only elect you if you do this. Well, it's, it, and so, so let's get back to Chancellor Merkel. She's a woman, she's in the top job. Yeah. M lots of women tell me she has a sort of a secret, sort of slightly feminist agenda that she's working in that direction. Is that, is that your take I on that? I think so. Yeah. I think so. She's, she's very pragmatic. Yeah. She's strong, she's Protestant, she's... Yeah. She's a typical East girl, oh, yeah. I would say. So she's, 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 she's used to work. Yeah. yeah. She's just saying, OK, now we do this and then we do the next one. Mm -hmm. And I think she sees the problem. Interesting, interesting. I hope. Okay. Angela, if you see this, <laughs> go ahead for it. Susanna, you live in the, uh, the Taunus, the Taunus region yeah. of Hessen in southwestern Germany. Now, I know because I've seen it, the, 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 it's a hilly area and the yeah, highest hill, hill is the Feldberg. Yes. Yeah? When you go up onto the Feldberg, I've never done it, but I imagine you possibly have. You can see in the distance the city of Frankfurt. You can. The city where you were born. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, Frankfurt has a very mixed reputation. Mm -hmm. Give me some positive words to describe it. Frankfurt is a big city, but a small place. Yeah. You can walk downtown. Yeah. You have the river, mine, which divides Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. The banking side with, the, yeah, with all the, tow uh, the towers and mm -hmm. the big houses. And the other side, which is really small old houses, museums. It's... I like the people. Mm -hmm. um, you have areas in Germany like Munich or Düsseldorf where they all wear a lot of gold and they're very 
Showy. Yeah, showy. <laughs> Frankfurt people are not like this. OK, more to come. I put a search uh, in the internet and I put the following words in. Frankfurt is famous for. What I got were its museums. Susanna's mentioned those already. Its airport. It's huge. Its book fair. Uh, and for being called the German Manhattan, called by some indeed because of the banks, Bankfurt. It's also famous for its green sauce. That's right, it's green sauce. Here we go. <laughs> Frankfurt is Germany's main air hub. It's also the country's chief commercial and finance centre. This city of contrasts is home to computer expert Pranhanjan Gadella. He's part of the city's 165,000 strong international community. The Indian IT professional loves Frankfurt's historic quarter, the Römerberg. And he's not just a fan of Frankfurter sausages. He also loves green sauce, which is served up in many of the pubs in Sachsenhausen, a center for Frankfurt's nightlife. Prabhanjan Gadell is on his way to a private cooking lesson with restaurateur Susanne Rudorf. Mr. Prabhanchan, just follow me. <laughs> the traditional recipe for green sauce includes seven different types of herbs, seasoning, lemon, mustard, and sour cream. It's reputed to have been Goethe's favorite food. The writer is one of the city's most famous sons. Green sauce is served with fried potatoes and hard-boiled eggs. It's all rounded off with a glass of apple wine. Cheers. Here's to good teamwork. <laughs> Green sauce is as typical for Frankfurt as half-timbered houses and clapboarding are for the district of Sachsenhausen. And of course, no German city can compete with Frankfurt's skyline. Oh, Frankfurt skyline. Frankfurt is a collection of boring and bland office blocks with boring and bland office workers who all go home to the suburbs at the end of the day. You want to get a <laughs> Shut up. This is, this what, is not true. It's not true. Frankfurt is not boring. Frankfurt is cool. I think it's a cool city. It's multi-culty. <laughs> we have lots of true. There's lots different and lots of, people. Yeah. We have lots of restaurants. Yeah. And people are not arrogant. They are friendly. And it's, yeah, it's an and, exciting city. And if city. I go into one of these restaurants and I say I want grisos, did I get the pronunciation right? No. I don't want to be unfriendly. No, it was quite good. Well, go on, tell me. Why yeah. do you do it? Grisos. Grisos. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. And you cook it? You really make it? Yeah, I do it. What do you eat it with? Hmm? What do you eat it with? You eat it with potatoes yeah. and egg. There must be hard-boiled egg with it. Okay. You can have meat with this, but I normally don't do it. Do you know, I've, I've been to Frankfurt many times and I've never eaten green sauce. Next time you come, I invite you. Cool. That sounds very, very good. We're running out of time, Susanna. We've got to yes. sort of wrap up the Hurry show. Up. We're going to get on to our Talking Germany quiz at, towards yep. the end of the show. Quick questions, quick answers. Yes. Yeah? Are you ready? Here we go. Satisfaction or discipline? <laughs> Satisfaction. <laughs> you've got a programme. I know that you're a great reader and you've had a programme about reading books. Reading or writing? Mm, reading. Perfection or pragmatism? Pragmatism. Sport or sofa? <laughs> sofa sport. <laughs> this is the big one. Fat or thin? In between, healthy. There you are. That's the message from Susanna Fröhlich. She's been a good <laughs> guest. By the way, she's a very cheery person. The German word Fröhlich means cheerful. That's what she's been. She's been a really good guest. If you've enjoyed her company as much as I have, come back next week. Cheers. <laughs>